and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some mono white angels. This is kicking off our donation deck day today on this Thursday. We've had uh, four awesome donation decks that we're going to be playing today, as you can see over here on the left hand part of your screen. And we're starting with mono white angels. What we have going on with this deck that's new for M20 is we have God's Willings to help protect our creatures. You know, our angels are all, you know, very good and, uh, you know, can take over games on their own. Like Resplendent Angel, Lyra Dawnbringer, these cards can just take over games on their own. So being able to protect them for just one mana is pretty nice. So we got those. And then we have a nice combo of cards here. We got Bishop of Wings, which plays some defense on the ground and uh, helps us prolong games against aggro decks for because every time we play an angel, we gain four life. And we have angel of vitality. So if we would gain four life, now we're going to gain five because uh, we're going to gain one extra life. And so if, we, if we're if we at 20 and we play Bishop of Wings on turn two, play angel of vitality on turn three, we gain our five life and then we have 25 or more life. And so therefore we just played a three mana four four flyer. And of course, if we have... If we have like these in play and we play Resplendent Angel, we gain five life. We make another 4 4 with Resplendent Angel. So we have a nice little combo of cards here to uh, try out. Uh, besides that, we have like some removal here with Baffling End, Prison Realm, Ixlon's Binding. Uh, gives, gives us some, some various enchantment removal. We're going to try one brought back, uh, see if this helps save some of our angels. Um, you know, we'll see kind of how how good this card is. This is basically a late game card that after, after we already have angels out, uh, we want to bring them back. We are going to go ahead and try the, the brought back Lotus field combo with only one of each. We're probably not, um, going to be doing this combo too often, but whenever we do, it'll probably be pretty sweet. Uh, cause you know, basically how it works is Lotus field ETBs and it says sacrifice two lands. And, you know, we can just have, like, two white mana that we float, sacrifice our two lands, and then we play brought back and we can get our lands back. So that's pretty cool. The other good thing that Lotus Field does in here, uh, besides that, is it, it's just going to add three mana of any color so that if we have Shalai in play, we can add three green and, you know, have just another way to be activating Shalai there with the Lotus Field. That's the reason why we have these green lands also is for Shalai activations. But Lotus Field can take care of that on its own. And then round our, our deck with a couple of Planeswalkers um, to help us out as well. Sideboard, we have a lot more uh, various removal options. Um, and uh, going to go ahead and, and go with four Takali Honor Guards here in the sideboard. This is a really good card these days against all the Risen Reef decks. I uh, really like Takali Honor Guard right now. The problem, like, it would be nice to be able to put these in the main deck, to be honest. But the problem with playing Honor Guard in the main deck, of course, is Bishop of Wings uh, would not gain any life anymore from uh, that trigger. Because Honor Guard would shut it down. So we're sending the Honor Guards to the sideboard for the Risen Reef matchups. All right. There we go. That's our deck. Mono White Angels. So with our donation decks today... What we're going to be doing, like we always do, is we're going to be heading on over to the traditional constructed queue and uh, playing a league here, seeing if we can get to five wins before we get to two losses. All right, Mono White Angels. Is there a is there an angel I should be playing? You should surrender now. You're not the angel. The fate of Ravnica is in all of our hands. You're the angel. I'm a little nervous, though, choosing Aurelia, because I think every time I, like, use Aurelia as my avatar, I don't do that well. So that means that we're due, though. That we're due for a good league with Aurelia. Yeah, Leyline of Sanctity is, is certainly good against Mono Red. But they, they are just able to save up their removal spells and use them on the angels anyway. And I don't really want Leyline of Sanctity kind of anywhere else. Like, I would like it against Grixis Control. But I don't want it against Esper. Which is not, not a ton of use for the card. 
new white kitty. There we go. Now I'm thinking we're going to be pretty good against mono red. Still. That was a great draw step right there. Get this Electromancer out of here. Perfect. Okay. You got it, Morgan. Hey, Daxter. Welcome back. Thanks for that resub there. Let's go with... Hmm. Basically, am I am I going to be protecting Tamik? Like, do I want to shock in and, and God's willing protect Tamik? I mean, it's just it's just Tamik. I feel like we don't really need to protect Tamik. I think we're going to save the God's willing for. A more important angel. Alright, we got one sub today. Oh, love it. Everybody's putting those hype boats in the chat. Thanks, everybody. Alright, Oslin. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Alright, so the Dragonauts is whenever they cast an instant or sorcery, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Hey, welcome from Brazil. Hmm. Playing Gideon gives them a pretty good attack at Gideon right now. Maybe sit back and play a little bit more defense. I would really like to draw a Lyra Dawnbringer. We got four of them in here. It's not really doing exactly anything right now. Well, whenever Lotus Field enters, Papa Tim, you have to sacrifice two lands. So if you if Lotus Field is your only land, or if you only have one other land when you play Lotus Field, you will have to sacrifice it. Because you have to sacrifice two lands, and Lotus Field you can sacrifice Lotus Field to its own ability. So you, you do not want to play it on turn one or turn two, because otherwise you'll just sacrifice it. I 
I should have put a counter on the blast zone. I believe in you. I don't think they were going to wait till end step and wait for me to tap out and then burn something. I should have just put a counter on the blast zone. Hey, Soul Farmer. Tilt. Well, so much for Gideon taking out Kefnet. <laughs> I fought worse. I was about to be able to do minus six on Gideon and get rid of the Kefnet. I surrender. There you go. That's God, God's willing. Angel of Vitality has not looked very impressive in this game. Dang, it's it's target creature you control. I can't uh, give that Kefnet protection from blue and make the Curious Obsession fall off. So I either take this trade, trading one Angel of Vitality for their Dragonauts and Gutter Snipe, or I try to God's Willing and save the Angel. No, I'm going to just take the trade. Because if I, if I God's Willing and try to save the Angel, it's possible they just play some spell... Blow this up on their turn after drawing. It's possible they play some spell and then the, the Dragonauts gets bigger and everything. They'd be passing it back to me. Angel of Vitality is not that important. All right, well. Yep, it's a Lava Runner. That is true that I did let them copy a spell, that they could have copied a spell because I let them draw. But the reason why I wanted to let them draw is so that it goes farther down instead of being, you know, it's, it's one extra card down after letting them take that draw step. So that's, that's why I did that, but you're right, they could have hit Lightning Strike and gotten the copy of Lightning Strike and I would have been sad. 
Um, I don't I don't think we're at a best deck in the metagame kind of point of standard right now. I don't think that's usually a thing, you know, like 10 days into a standard format. Didn't even shock themselves. We got the win there. Our opponent made a pretty suspect attack, but not the best showing from our deck. The Angel of Vitality did not seem like a very strong card. I guess I guess for this card to be kind of good, we need we need either Bishop of Wings or Lyra Dawnbringer. Like we need we need one of those two for the Angel. All right, so Wanderer Binding, those cards are pretty good against Kefnet. Wanderer is also pretty decent against all those burn spells. Hmm. So we're going to play that thing. I'm going to cut an Angel of Vitality, cut a Gideon, bring in a couple of four drops. I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't think we need the fourth baffling end. Would I rather have one Ajani over, or sorry, one Gideon over an Ajani? And I think the answer is no. I think I'd rather have Ajani. Let's give this a try. Takali doesn't do anything to Kefnet. Kefnet doesn't have an enter the battlefield ability. Takali only stops enter the battlefield abilities. The Lotus Field was fine. You know, last game it's just it's just basically a land, but it was good. Looks like they just kept a one lander. We can have the combo next turn. We got the combo. We're going to have like Enfi mana. It does mean us not playing a three drop this. So we can either go combo or we can play a three drop. I think it's probably probably best to go combo to just set up our other turns like All right, so here's our combo. We sack these two lands. And then we bring them back. Boom. Now we're going to have six mana next turn. Just double rampant growth. Speaking of combos, since that's what we're doing with, with life. Gain five. Well, this has been pretty sweet. We'd really like to draw a land. A land would be awesome. Yeah. Because the reason why land is awesome is because Resplendent Angel, you know, we just tap that, we gain five life to trigger Resplendent Angel, and now Wanderer is going to protect the Resplendent Angel so they can't just 
uh, burn out the Resplendent Angel. Gain another five life. Now this this was the game where our deck did its thing, that's for sure. Gain five more life, give them all lifelink. And prevent all the damage to them. There's a wanderer, gain five more life, we're at 54. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Hey, Dark Claw. Awesome. Glad you love watching the donation decks. We got four sweet ones today. Sorry, kitty. I didn't let you, didn't have you match our deck. That was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. Doo, doo, doo. Looks like we got the Corpse Knight. Awesome. And a pack. We'll crack the pack. We need Mythics. 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 Boo. Not a Mythic. It's my wild card situation. Do any buttons work? Um, get packs. There we go. 44 rare and two mythic rare. Oh, awesome. I thought I only had one mythic rare. We got another one. From somewhere. Yeah, casual 54. With yeah, casual fifty four with twenty nine power of lifelink flyers in the air. I guess flyers in the air. You can just say flyers. You don't really need to say both of those. Mulligan. Yeah, that's gonna be. We're gonna be ramping real hard there. It's just, you know, it's just like blue green. Leyline Ascendancy later on is blue green ramp. Where we'll be using uh, Simic Ascendancy and the green ley line. But then yeah, you know, it's just like Nissa, Krasis, all that kind of good stuff. All right, another blue red deck. This one searching for treasure though. See this this treasure looks like that one's a whole lot more colorful than what this treasure looks like. So you get to the treasure cove and you think you're getting that other one, but you actually just get like these like trinkets that are like, you know, two dollars at Party City or whatever, instead of like the gold. Like you're expecting to get to the gold. It's like, nah, here's like a plastic party hat and if you thought wrong. <laughs> if we play an angel we're going to gain a lot of life I can tell you that right now how much life nobody, nobody could ever know there will be a lot though drawn from dreams is sweet I don't think people can actually count that high, however much life it's going to be. Is born of struggle. <laughs> the real treasure is the friends we made along the way. Or it's the wild cards we made along the way. Yeah, 
Yeah, that'd be nice for like, yeah, the treasures in Ixalan, if you think about the actual treasure tokens that were made in Ixalan, there were like four different arts for treasure tokens. That'd be cool like in the setting somewhere if you could, um, I wish you if you could like best. say like which, which, uh, which arts that you want to use for different tokens, that'd be really cool. So who knows how much life we gained there, but it was a lot after playing that angel. That'd be a cool cool thing in the settings. You know, like, what treasure token art do you want to use? What goblin token art do you want to use? And so on. All right, so I need to be worried about... I need to be worried about Settle. Whatever's going on in this deck, how they're playing like Drawn from Dreams and stuff, this definitely feels like a Settle deck. I'm not really planning on playing Lyra, because if, if I play Lyra, then if they just use a, a sweeper, they just like wipe my whole board and everything. Um, I, I'm gonna kind of wait for like one more mana to be able to have brought back in Lyra, and plus like like look at all the stuff we already have. We don't we don't need to play Lyra. I don't think. Maybe we can just kind of hang out. I can just act. I can just activate Archer Roska and draw a card. Get another card in hand. We could could put some counters on Blast Zone if we want to go towards. What? Hmm. That's a ripoff. I don't want to exchange life totals. I guess Settle would force them to use all their treasures. So I have two lethal attackers here. You bring stuff back from exile. Lame. What kind of brought back card, are you? Doesn't really feel like playing an angel is what I'm supposed to do this turn, considering I'm just going to gain a whole lot of life and then give it to them. The life that is. Really hope they're not just playing lightning strike. There's just nothing I could really do to stop me from dying to a lightning strike. Like there's not I didn't have don't have any options. Once they play the Axis of Mortality, there's not a single thing I could do to, to stop me from dying to a Lightning Strike. At least yet. It's a 
a good sign. Yeah, we could have played to the Shalai to stop the burn now, but I don't I don't think they just have burn spell now. The reason why I don't want to play Shalai is because Shalai costs four mana, and I'm gonna be working on this blast zone now to get up to get the blast zone to four to destroy these Ixalan's bindings. Yeah, Shalai would stop settle as well. <laughs> yeah, access of mortality. I know we were at you know, like 36 and they were at 3, and they just play Axis of Mortality to switch our life totals. It was V-Rude. Yeah, the, the pre I drew the card the previous turn because I couldn't actually get the Blast Zone up to 4. I could get it up to, to 3, but I wasn't going to actually get it up to 4. Waticus! Thanks for the resub, Waticus. Getting that hype in the chat. Thanks, Waticus. Um, you may have two target players exchange life totals. So they do have to target the player. So with Shalai and play, they do not get to. Uh, switch life total now. So I need I need six mana for blast zone. So I I cannot blast zone and play resplendent angel. Do I need to be worried about them killing me, though? Brotback hasn't done, like, wouldn't have done anything this game so far if I would have played it at any point. The only thing I'm debating is if I'm, if seven is safe or if I need to play this and gain four life. I think seven safe. Explosion is, of course, the card that I'm a little worried about. They could have main fire. It's a possibility. Bane fire, we would not, we couldn't stop bane fire though, because even us gaining four life, we'd be at eleven, and they can bane fire for eleven. It was Banefire. I mean, so yeah, I could have stopped it with Shalai. The next turn, though, like, our opponent had that one turn, because the next turn I was blowing up all those Ixalan's bindings, and I was going to gain a lot of life. All right, so Axis of Immortality, huh? All right, got to be a little... Got to be a little prepared for that. Uh, I don't know if we want this.
Spyglass would be for treasure map. The brought back didn't do a single thing that whole game, so I should probably shouldn't play it. No, Banefire doesn't work against Wanderer. You have to... You have to... Or no, the damage can't be prevented. Oh, yeah, you're right. Never mind, it does. Never mind. Yeah, damage cannot be prevented, so yeah. Wanderer... May not work. All we needed was one more turn. Or, I guess I should have just played July. Playing Shalai meant all those things under Ixalan's binding was were gone for good, but I guess I needed to do that. No, Spyglass does not stop Axis. But it does stop treasure map. Mink's not really doing anything ability-wise, I don't think, in this matchup. So just, you know, 2-3 flyer for 2. It's pretty decent. and scatter uh, syncopate uh, to me I'm gonna need you to to do about 20 damage all right A lot worse than last game. Last game, my hand was was very good. Regret not winning that game. We we're going to be a lot worse against sweepers here. Considered attacking with Tamik also, since we have the Blast Zone at 2, that then the Blast Zone blow up the treasure map. Okay. 
But instead of doing that, we'll just attack with just the Lyra and then replay Lyra. <laughs> Wake Root Elemental? Is that that's a rare? Is that from the new set or something? I don't even know what Wake Root Elemental is. I don't think you should have picked that for your playset. If you had to choose one card to be opening up in packs a lot. That's probably a bad decision. Hold that thought. Oh yeah, it's the the green one with the 5G activation cost. And like I feel like 4G gets you some pretty good coverage. Not sure if we need this 5G. Teferi is going to be tough to beat with a whole bunch of lands. Ooh. This is hardly my we actually killed defeat. Teferi. I was expecting a settle there. Uh, 5G is necessary for cloud gaming. Well, I do like Final Fantasy VII, so I support some cloud gaming. We have so many cards over there. So many cards. I assume that's what you're referring to. I liked last game whenever we had the Arch of Orozka. And last game we had the brought back. This game we have the God's Willing instead. Well, God's Willing doesn't stop your creature from dying from a Cleansing Nova. This isn't a fight you can win. We need to move. Cleansing Nova doesn't target, it just destroys your creatures. Doesn't matter if you have protection from any color. Only time will tell. Well, I'm glad that traded with the Sinister Sabotage. That is not a very important card. A one power creature. I'll take I'll trade with the counter spell for that. Let's keep up the pace. So many of those things. Yeah, we're pretty dead. I should have won the first game. Yep. They probably do just have a lot of counter spells. 
they were willing to counter that Bishop of Wings. Admittedly, our deck's not going to be very good against control. Like, decks with a, a whole lot of sweepers and... Sweepers, counterspells, card advantage. That's... That is not what angels want to play against. Guess I should have been taking out God's Willing. I oh, know that other game they just had so many Ixalan's bindings. And this game is just all sweepers. I feel like I had the tools to win that, that first game. I didn't have the tools at all to win game two. Either getting rid of Tamik or Prison Realm. Let's get rid of Tamik. Oh, that thing has reach. I forgot this thing has reach. How is this thing supposed to block flyers? Anyway. Is this the only beast with reach? That's not something you see very often. Yeah, it's just a tree, but I wouldn't say that a tree has reach. I think that, you know, like birds and angels and everything can fly pretty far over a tree. I protect the virtue of this world. But I guess it's swat stuffs from the tree. No, Bishop would gain, gains four life after you play an angel. Res, Resplendent Angel needs five life to make a 4-4. Four, four. So playing Bishop first doesn't mean you just get an angel. Underestimate my fortitude. So they still get to double their mana with the Nissa. I could prison realm the Grazer and kill the and then just attack the Nissa. Ah, that was the card that I was I was just going through and talk when I was talking. I was gonna say that there's one card that I don't really want them to have is Ugin. 
because Ugin is colorless. These God's Willings haven't really done anything for me. I can create this whole league. Or destroy. We've been sitting with a bunch of God's Willings in our hands that aren't doing anything. So do I kill Nyssa or do I kill Ugin? And do I want this land or not? Yeah. Please, no more Ugins. Please, just not an Ugin. <clears throat> yeah, Ugin makes a 2-2, Nissa makes a 3-3. The 3-3 that Nissa makes can get proliferated also with Karn's Bastion. This time we're going to just take the draw step. Hmm. Right. Those things are adding too. We need we need to get land here. Good. I must seek comfort in the land. I will seek other allies. Oh. I'm just taking lethal. Anything but Ugin. That turn. That Ugin crushed me. Hmm. Why does Ugin have to be colorless? Yeah, I'm going to Spyglass Ugin and Spy Spyglass Karn. I'm going to have those. Um, you know, definitely, like, they have all their creatures and everything. We'll have Cleansing Nova. It's possible I want Honor Guard instead of Bishop. We saw, what, just Jade Light, though? But they, you know, they probably have Branch Walker, Jade Light, maybe Wild Growth Walker also.
63. Alright, and therefore I'm going to be taking out the Angel of Vitality since I took out the bishops. I'm, you know, being enchantment heavy and the artifacts and stuff, I'm not going to be playing the planar cleansing. All right, we'll take this hand. Not so bad. Definitely want to try to find some interaction for Nissa. They have Nissa on turn three, and it's going to be really, really hard to beat. So we just got to hope they don't. Okay, interaction for Nissa. Good. Now please draw land. I guess maybe I'm supposed to attack and trade with Paradise Druid. Nah. We're gonna need two more lands for Dawnbringer also. Ugh. Gross. I will aid you. The land fights for us. On land. Come on, land. Yay. Fight on without me. All right, we need another land. One more land. Okay, not a land, but this would shut off Ugin, which they're only one mana away from playing Ugin. You know, we could go like a Johnny here. I was going to be happy going a Johnny, but oh yeah, they just got Ugins and Nissas. That's kind of cool how they show your hand shows the hand like that. All right, the game plan worked. They can't cast Nista. Ugin doesn't do anything. Now next turn we can make both of these. Well, we'll make one Resplendent Angel. Uh, we'll make the Resplendent Angel a 4-4, so that whenever we play Lyra, it would be a 5-5, but then we'll make one of these in. Okay, never mind. I know Ugin doesn't do anything, but there's a chance that Ugin does something after this next turn, depending on what my opponent draws. It's also more likely that they chump block with the Grazer for attacking, with, attacking the Ugin. Hey, Dr. Grindel. Yeah, Ugin does make their other Ugin cheaper. That's pretty nice. Do not fear, my friend. I will lend you my strength. Should be should be good to go here. All right, game three. I don't know if I really want four baffling ends. I 
really want anything else here, though. Maybe Angel of Vitality, but then... Ugh, even Angel of Vitality just gets blocked by those stupid grazers. Could play another Ajani. Ajani's pretty nice. If they kill Tamik or... Like, Tamik and Honor Guard are both pretty important, so if they kill either of those, we can bring them back. We'll do that over a Baffling End. We gotta draw lands again. We got our same Honor Guard, Resplendent Angel, Spyglass, Dawnbringer Curve. We need to draw something to get rid of Anissa. And. I mean, if they have turn three Nissa again, that'll be rough. Those are not two good draw steps. Those have not been good so far. My retribution will be swift. Please, no Nyssa. Can we ever play against them when they don't have Nyssa? No Nyssa. No Nyssa. No. It's just always Nyssa. Every game. We are all connected. Harness the elements. Always Nyssa. I am not frightened by you. Spyglass doesn't really isn't really great against Nyssa, because they still have double mana and everything. So I want the Resplendent Angel to at least start pressuring Nyssa. Like a perfect hand. More than you could learn in a thousand lifetimes. Your past is unwritten. The land shall conquer you. That was just an awesome, awesome hand. The hands you dream with with that deck. I mean, besides turn one land war off ahead, everything else. But yeah, every game just ramp into Nissa the Nugan. They had it turn three. Turn three Nissa, turn four Ugin, game one. Game two, they had turn three Nissa, turn four Ugin. Game three, they had turn three Nissa, turn four Ugin. No, no, no. They had, never mind, because they had Karn in there also. So Karn on three, Nissa on f So it's turn four, Nissa, turn five, Ugin, because they had Karn to go get him some more good stuff. I mean, I'm not beating this Nissa. This thing's over. Forever away from casting anything.
Oh, we got another pack. We can crack. See if we get a mythic. Nope, a rare. Well, unfortunately our deck went one and two. If we're playing against aggro, Bishop of Wings and Angel of Vitality are awesome. The problem is when it's not aggro, they're not too great. But they are, uh, specifically Bishop of Wings is just amazing against aggro. Angel of Vitality is very meh as far as constructed goes. It's below average as far as like a standard quality card. It just is. Uh, Bishop of Wings, awesome against aggro. Not really that good against other things. Um, God's Willing was pretty disappointing in our deck. So, you know, we're just playing against Sweepers and Ugins. Sweepers, like, the thing about, like, the Angel deck is the Angel deck was always good against aggro. Um, it was all, but it always struggled against control. And, yeah, ramping into, plane, like, the Planeswalker is super fast. It was really powerful Planeswalker. Is it the decks struggled with that before, and Bishop of Wings and Angel of Vitality don't really help there. It only it helps its its better matchups. Um, brought back was pretty nice. Most of the time, there was one game that we had it that it didn't do anything. But besides that, we we got to do some pretty cool stuff with brought back. Um, but yeah. Turn three Nissa is still just difficult to beat when you're not able to curve out whenever you're stuck on lands. As we saw there and Ugin. I mean, we really had the Nissa like Nissa honestly on its own is not that difficult to beat with you know Lyra and other angels. It's just the Ugins, you know, just curving out to Ugin like that. That card is Ugin is just awesome, and we can't God's willing to save our creatures. Yeah, Ugin was really really tough for us. Um. The reason, yeah, what mono what mono white gives you is it gives you a good mana base where you're never like color screwed because you always have like your your white sources for these things, and it does give you some really nice utility lands. So the blast zone was nice taking out to fairy once, um, but yeah, likely there should be two colors. And I think that the the other color, honestly, I think the best way to be making an angel deck is to be going black white, and where you have Safara. Or not Safara, uh, whatever the the black white angel is called. It's not Safara is the new one. Um, yeah, get so you have Seraph. There you go, Seraph. They're also close, like you know Shalai, Seraph, Safara. There's so many of them. So yeah, going black white, you get Seraph of the Scales, and then you also have like Duress, and you have you know you have like Elder Spell. You have also like some really good removal in black so black kind of just gives you like good removal um and serif also and there's just there's just a lot of good black white cards whether it's Dispark, um you know oath of kaya there are so many good ones legion's end yeah so i feel like i feel like with angels that's that's the way to be going is black white um <laughs> and uh there we go. It's we tried it there with mono white, but I think black white, and I think I think no bishop of wings, and I think just honor guards main deck instead of bishops, and no angel of vitality. Like I, I don't think you need these, and I think there's just more powerful things to be doing. Yep, and better removal and everything. But there we go. So thank you, Chronic Slayer, there for the donation deck though. Uh, good to try out the new cards. You know, that's what we always want to do is try out new cards, and that's what we got to do here with Bishop and Angel. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned some stuff. Um, hope you got to see that sweet game with Brought Back and Lotus Field, because that game was awesome. Um, but there we go. That's Model White Angels. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.